Hi, I'm Mickey Zeta and I'm excited to be here on Wednesday night. This is Wednesday Night Live with Mickey. Thanks for joining us. What I'm going to talk about tonight is something that's come up a couple of times with people that I've talked with and it's um, it surprised me a little bit. I, my, my mission is to work with women who have left abuse and uh, and it seems like even when we're out, we question if we really were abused. And that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. Uh, there are many, many, many more um, things that we question about leaving abuse. And, and one of them is, was I really abused? Was I really abused or did I overreact? Now, that sounds crazy right now. That sounds crazy, but it's true. We all go through that. In fact, I questioned that for many, many years once I left my abuser and Sometimes I still do. Sometimes I find myself thinking, was that real or, or what happened? Well, here's what I'm going to tell you. It's real. And I'm making a list. I'm going to be putting that on my private Facebook page. I'm making a list of uh, a lot of things. I've got 30 right now, but I'm just hitting the top 10. What I think are the top 10, you might have more. You might have other ones that you think are more important. So here's what I'm going to suggest. Um, if I don't hit the one that you think is the most important, send me an email or a text, put it on this Facebook page so that uh, other people uh, may agree with you. They may think, well, this isn't one of the top 10, the ones she hit, we're not. But there are a lot, lots of reasons. And one, the main one I'm going to uh, talk about is he never hit me. I have women who come to me and say, I'm not sure I really lived in abuse because he never hit me. Well, abuse takes so many different, different um, uh, it wears a lot of different hats and hitting is not or, or uh, physical abuse is not just one of them I mean it is just one of them it's not the only one so what's important for you to know is that emotional abuse is horrible I would take emotional abuse over physical abuse any day I would, let me say that again, I would take physical abuse over emotional abuse any day. Emotional abuse, it just kind of stays in your head. It's, it's horrible. Bruises on my body, they heal. But bruises in my mind and in my psyche, those take a long time. So just because you weren't um, physically uh, hit or treated poorly physically, that doesn't mean you weren't abused. Uh, there's financial abuse, there's emotional abuse, there's, uh, of course, physical abuse. Another one that is... Um, that comes up pretty often is uh, he, he doesn't admit that he's an abuser. So maybe I was wrong. Maybe he's not an abuser. Well, he is. If you left and, and it was at the point where you couldn't live there anymore, he is an abuser. And there are so many different, just Google it. There are so many um, other things that, uh, that identify your abuser as an abuser and you as a survivor of abuse. He, he doesn't admit he's an abuser. Um, he denies his behavior. That's one. You know you were abused. You know that. So don't let him play head games with you. Another one, another way to know that you really were living in abuse is I walked on eggshells. I walked on eggshells at home. And, and when I say that, if <laughs> you know what I mean. You know what I mean. I even bought, a, I wasn't admitting that I was living in abuse, but I bought a book called Stop Walking on Eggshells. Now, how amazing is that? And those are the things that we abusers, the, we survivors of abuse, those are the things that we, those are head games that we play. I was afraid to voice my opinion. That's another one. If you were afraid to voice your opinion, you definitely lived in abuse. There's no question about it because your opinion is just as important as anybody else's. And it's just as important as your former spouse's or your former partner who was abusive. It's, uh, your opinion is so important. And I'd never, I, I got to where I didn't voice my opinion. And pretty soon, I didn't even know who I was. I didn't even know who I was and what I, it was awful. I was 53 and I didn't know who I was or what I thought or what I liked. I allowed, his, another one is, I allowed his poor behavior toward me because I didn't want it to escalate. So if you're allowing, or, or if you did in the past, allow poor behavior toward you, whether it was physical or emotional or financial, whatever, then that was abuse. That was abuse. And that's, um, and you know, it, it was going to escalate. So that's just, that's such a big clue, but we, we don't let those things go ahead. He didn't talk to me. Uh, my 
my abuser used to shut me out for weeks. Sometimes he didn't talk to me for weeks at a time. Now, why did I think that was okay? And why did I not think that was abuse? But I didn't, I didn't, but there's another one. He didn't talk to me. Whether it's for a few hours or a day or weeks, it doesn't matter. That is abuse. And if that happened to you, yes, yes, you lived in abuse. He blamed me for every negative thing that happened in his life. And, oh my gosh, I, I remember feeling responsible because it rained. <laughs> I, it's crazy. I thought, I thought man, he's going to get mad at me because this is a holiday weekend and it's raining. And that's somehow going to be my fault. And, uh, God, you know, come on, Mickey. <laughs> How do you think that's okay? But somehow I did. Somehow I thought that was all right. Um, and again, if you get blamed for things or you got blamed for things that there's no way that you could control, or even if they were things you could control, but, um, but they weren't your fault. If you got blamed for those, you lived in abuse. You certainly did. Um, another one is, um, I was his voice. I was his voice in conflicts. He came off like the really nice guy and I was the bitch. <laughs> I was the one who said all the things that he wanted to say, but he kind of somehow got me to say his words. His words came out of my mouth, and a, a particularly in a conflict, a conflict of, uh, in a conflicting situation where somebody had done something he didn't think was right, or he was treated poorly. Somehow, I'm the one who who spoke his words, who who said the things that he wanted to say. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how that happened. It, it evolved over years and years. But there you go. That's abuse. If you hear if you hear yourself or you heard yourself say he wouldn't let me that folks that women that ladies that is abuse he wouldn't let me he has no control nobody controls what you can do or where you can go or who you can see whether you spend holidays with your parents or his parents you have a voice and uh, saying he won't let me is is a big, big, big red flag. It's it's a it's like a neon light saying, okay, this is abuse. So if you found yourself saying he won't let me, don't question whether you lived in abuse. You did. You absolutely did. And he hid. Um, I hid. I hid his behavior from my friends, from my family, from our neighbors. Um, I thought people didn't know. And some of you have heard me say I had a sign in my yard, and it said, I'm fine. Thank you very much. And of course it wasn't a real sign and of course I wasn't fine but that's the way I lived I'm fine thank you very much so there's ten things that uh, if you experience any of those you definitely definitely lived in abuse and so I'm encouraging you uh, don't feel bad don't feel guilty just um, just accept that that yes you're right you're right that's what happened and uh, and I, I congratulate you I give you so much credit for choosing to get out choosing that your life is more important than that. You deserve so much more than to live in abuse and to be controlled. Abuse, as you know, is all about control. It's all about control. And those of us who choose abusive parent, uh, abusive spouses often had abusive parents. I didn't. I didn't. But somehow there were abusive men that I was attracted to. And um, I bet you that as a, a survivor of abuse, you're feeling the same way. So there's 10 things that consider those. See if those are things that happened in your life. And don't question. Don't question anymore whether you actually lived in abuse. You did. And I'm excited that you accepted that fact and that you got out. You don't need to question it anymore. Um, I'm Mickey Zeta. I have uh, some Facebook pages called Surviving Abuse Network. And one is a private page. Surviving Abuse Network is a private page. It has a picture of a bird sitting inside a cage. You've probably seen it. And, uh, and of course, the door is open. We can escape and we can become ourselves at any time. So that's my private page. I also have a private group. I also have a page. It's called Surviving Abuse uh, Network. And uh, it's brand new. There's only, I think, less than 30 people who like it right now. But it's on the grow. It's growing. So thank you for being here. Please like those pages and uh, encourage people to watch this video. If you're seeing this video and you, and you know somebody who would benefit from watching it, please, please have them watch. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm so excited to be on this mission of helping women. I'm, and my niche pretty much is women over 50. Helping women stay out of abuse and live happy, healthy, safe lives. 
I'm Mickey Zeta. I'm glad you're here with me. I'll be back on Sunday night for live video and I plan to do a couple pop-ups as we go. So thank you for being here. I'll see you on Sunday night, 7.30, same time, same place. Enjoy your evening.